The concept for this series is simple. What would happen if you took a vanilla Minecraft player and gave them all the mods to play with? Would they thrive in this beautiful and complex world? Or would it be simply too much for them to handle? Welcome to All The Mods 9. Hey everyone, my name is CryptoGal and welcome to the next episode of All The Mods 9. In the last episode, we set up this Wixy potion brewing source generating amazing little setup here, which has been working absolutely flawlessly. The amount of source that this potion jar provides it basically insta-fills these source jars. I also went and added some of these imbuement chambers, crafting all the various different types of essences. I have the drawers that have pusher and puller upgrades, and all I'm doing is manually feeding these source gems, and we're basically getting the essences out the bottom. Now, I had these linked up here to this relay, which is basically sending the mana or I should say the source out of this link, and I was sending it to a bunch of these jars up here, but we ended up running out of source quite quickly. If we ever need more in the future, we can turn it back on again. But this has been pretty awesome. I love this build and I'm super happy that we're actually making use of it, even though we don't really need much out of ours. I think it's been really awesome just getting to play around with some of the stuff that we normally wouldn't play around with too much, like these guys. Hi. Frank. Yeah, we also figured out that the golems will transform the amethyst blocks that we set down here into the actual budding amethysts. So now they've basically converted all of these and they're farming them quite a bit more efficiently now. Uh, I mean, efficiently in the sense of, you know, as fast as these guys work and as fast as the, the crystals will actually grow, which is very, very slow. Good job, Frank. So in today's episode, we are going to progress further towards our goal of getting the ATM star by getting into the Extreme Reactors mod. The Extreme Reactors mod is a pretty interesting power generation source. If you were using this in the early game, it actually wouldn't be a terrible source of power. I've used it in other packs that I've played, and it's actually a really good source of power. What we actually need for the star is this Insanite block. It's part of the recipe for the Philosopher's Fuel, and everything else here we pretty much have access to already, albeit the Forbidden and Arcanist stuff we haven't quite got to yet, but that'll be coming soon. I think it's going to be a good idea for us to kind of just hammer out the Extreme Reactor stuff. The Extreme Reactors mod is a little bit bulky. It's not the most clean looking and it can be a little bit overwhelming if you don't have a proper build for it. Realistically, I don't see a need for us to really have it beyond just getting the stuff that we need for the star. So what our plan is, is we're going to actually go to the mining dimension, which is a nice flat area where we're going to actually do all of our Extreme Reactor stuff and we can just keep it over there. We have plenty of other builds that we have planned for this area. But unfortunately, Extreme Reactors just isn't in that plan. So let's head over to the mining dimension. I preemptively set up a little bit of refined storage here, just in case we have to do any on the spot crafting. We have all of this space to work with to basically dive in and get ourselves some reactors set up. Part of the beginning of the mod is we have to get some of these basic materials like the reactor casings and the reactor glass. These are made with graphite, iron, and sand. And graphite, of course, is just coal smelted down into the graphite. We have basically made an absolute ton of this stuff accidentally because for a while we had our coal being fully smelted into the graphite when we had it coming through from our bees. So we actually have a substantial stockpile of graphite to the tune of 15,000 graphite. We aren't technically producing it as of now, but if we ever find that we need more in the future, that shouldn't be a problem. Now, I have already gone ahead and gotten a couple things put into the autocraft that I know that we're going to need. So the reactor casing and the reactor glass should already be in here. I'm not sure how much this we're actually going to need, but I'll grab a stack of each for now. So here's where it talks about all the different components to the reactor. We need to have a control rod and the fuel rod. We have to have a reactor controller and we have to have interfaces. So basically we have to have a way to tap the energy in and out, as well as getting the physical solid resources into the reactor that it's actually going to be burning because it actually burns uranium as well. Oh, it burns uranium? It does burn uranium. Not okay. not fast. Don't we're good. Don't worry. I need more bees, Cal. No, no, it's it's fine. <laughs> All right, here comes our waste. It's at one millibucket currently, and that should have just sent the cyanide right into our system. Yep, there it is. Our first nice. cyanide ingot. So this does work. We're going to tear this down and make the bigger version. To make the bigger version, we just have to make sure that we use the reinforced parts. It'll actually let you make one that's 32 by 32 by 48. We're probably not gonna make one that large, but we will make one that is bigger than this. <laughs> all right, we're back. We have all the reinforced stuff that we've auto-crafted up. I think what we're gonna do is make this, we're gonna fit this in within a chunk. 
So let's try and fit this all within this one chunk here. I'm not gonna lie, that pattern repeating is kind of painful. Like it's a little overkill considering that once we have the B for this, we don't really need this. We literally need three blocks of cyanide. That is expensive stuff actually. Is it? Um, What is it required to make? It's a lot of steel. Oh, we have tons of steel though, we're fine. Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried still. I'm just saying it's still expensive. Nothing at this point is really that expensive for us. Don't do this. Don't be us. Just make this a smaller one. You don't need to do this. This is silly. This is not necessary. This is overkill in every possible conceivable way. I can just straight up be like, hey, make me 1300 of these. And I'm like, I don't even bat an eye at it. It's crazy how we have so many resources and we still are not near the star. Like we're, we're getting close. We're getting there. But there's still quite a few things that we haven't done. All right. And now we need to craft up a bunch of the reinforced caps for these. And we'll just do that. Oh, it's even larger than that. Why did I do this? Oh, never. <laughs> Why have I done this? Why am I the way I am? The biggest eyesore ever, but you know what? At least it's not near our base. And this is a valid, unfortunately, valid reactor. Damn. I don't I don't want to talk about it. It's embarrassing. It's anyway. Very ugly. All right, importer, we're going to import everything back into our system from here and then we're going to export the uranium one more time. And this thing should be working it might need a couple uh, a stack of oh, in the uh, exporter it's working now it's moving okay so that's that's cooking now this is generating a lot of power <laughs> you know what i'll just put i'll just put a, a tap on it at least make a little bit of use out of this sure aha okay we have enough for a block oh we had that much already wow all of this for like maybe like three minutes now of waiting before we have everything all right cyanide b incoming cyanide b incoming let's go one and he's got a he's almost big we got this let's go Ta -da! so we're gonna be getting those guys all bred up so we can have a good source of cyanide coming in that we don't have to waste all of our uranium in this big monster basically from here we have to make something called the reprocessor the reprocessor is basically how we can turn one resource into a different type so then we turn the ludicrate into the ridiculite but we have to have you know a different fluid in here as well so we're going to need a bunch of these fluidizers and a bunch of the reprocessors, which is where this setup gets a little bit bulky and a little bit unmanageable if you're not really organized with it. So what I'm going to actually do is craft up a few of these reprocessor materials. We're going to have to get the fluid injectors and a couple other pieces here. Uh, we need the waste injector, which I think is what we actually need to put the cyanide into. The multi-block can be a little finicky, so we're gonna have to make sure that we build it correctly. I don't think it will actually allow it to be built any other way. And plutonium is just one step out of a very long and kind of tedious process of getting all the way up to the final material. We have quite a bit of work ahead of us, and I think we'll just put this somewhere a little bit close by. I think what I'm gonna do is actually downsize this reactor. This is way overkill for what we're gonna need. I may have gotten a little silly with this reactor. All right, this whole thing's taken down. It's probably still going to be the thumbnail, so sue me. It's a three by three by seven. So first of all, I'm going to build up like this, and then we have to go seven high. And let's go ahead and just build it up on all sides. We can also use some of the reprocessor glass, which is actually going to be handy. We can see inside of our machine. So we'll throw on the reprocessor glass. It's not the prettiest looking machine in the world. I will say it's a really a off yellow and meh green. The reprocessor collector must be placed in the center of the bottom face of the structure. We actually have to have these in very specific spots of this multi-block. The reprocessor collector has to go in the middle here, just like so. Controller right in the middle, just like that. And of course, we're going to have to expand this on the top now. So let's go ahead and make sure this comes up by three more blocks. The waste injector has to go in the center of the top face. So that actually has to come all the way up here and we have to put our waste injector right here like so. Now that we have those two placed in, these other three ports, the injector, the fluid injector, the output, and the power port, actually don't have any requirements. They just have to be placed somewhere that isn't on the frame. So let's place the output port right on the right side like this. We'll put the power port right above the controller. And what's the last one? The fluid injector. We'll put that one just above here like so. Now that we have everything in place here, we have a finished multi-block. So we have the ultra exporter here. So we're going to place one here and one up here. And then we have to connect it in with some cabling. Make sure that we have this filtered on the top here to have cyanite. And all we have to do now is come in here with our exporter, set this to be fluids, and filter this for water. Once we turn this on, this should start turning all the cyanide into plutonium. 
which it is perfect. Now we actually want to keep the plutonium to turn the other bees into the plutonium bee. I have plutonium now being stored in a drawer and that'll fill up with plutonium over time. Next up, we have to get the ludicrate. Now ludicrate just takes some cyanite and the plutonium ingots to turn into ludicrate. And that is using the cyanite fluid, not the ingots. And to get the fluid, we have to actually create a new multi-block called the fluidizer. Basically, we send the cyanide ingots directly into the fluidizer, and that turns into a thousand millibuckets of the fluid. The fluidizer is a customizable multi-block that has a minimum size of three by three by three. So what we'll do is just craft up a few of these fluidizer casings, a little bit of fluidizer glass, and then we'll also get a couple of these ports. Actually, what we'll do is we'll make this as tall as this one. We'll make it a seven by five. We'll place the fluidizer controller down like this. So the fluidizer operates in one of three modes. It can convert solids to fluids. It can combine two solids into a fluid or it can combine two fluids into a new fluid. So we're actually gonna be making probably quite a bit of use out of all of the fluidizers because there's a lot of recipes that involve fluid combination or turning a solid into a fluid. To start though, let's make sure that we have all the glass filled in here so that we can actually have this multi-block form. So this should now be converting cyanite into the cyanite fluid. And then to turn that into the ludicrate, we have to turn plutonium and cyanite into this by using another reprocessor. To actually make this a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is put an external storage on every single drawer where we have a new material coming in, which will just give us access to that material using refined storage. So once again, we have to actually build another reprocessor. Basically do the exact same thing one more time here. All right, so apparently refined storage does not handle the cyanite and the fluids from this mod very well. So I can't actually select this to export cyanite directly in here. So what we're gonna probably end up doing here is just piping directly out of our drawer straight into the reprocessor and not go through refined storage at all. It's not ideal, but it's unfortunately just gonna be the way that it has to be, I think. If there is a way to do this with refined storage and the fluids, let me know in the comments down below. But in the meanwhile, this will be a pretty decent way to do it as well. So all we have to do here is just set up our normal fluid exporters and this should hopefully still work. Yeah, this works fine. And after giving this a little bit of power in the back here, this should be converting this all into ludicrate. And we're gonna do the exact same thing over and over again. We're gonna have the magentite that we're gonna need. So. What we're going to do now is basically use a fluidizer with magentite, but to get magentite, we actually have to do something a little bit different. Okay, so uh -huh. what we have here is we just have plutonium being piped in, the plutonium ingots. By using a solid access port here, we're just actually exporting the magentite ingots directly. So what we're going to want to do is basically get enough magentite, which we can get the magentite B. The magentite B is actually how we're going to go ahead and get all the different tiers of Bs going forward as well. For example, we can convert the Vagentite B to get the Ridiculite B to get the so, Insanite B, ideally. If I can also explain something very briefly about that. So basically, in the Productive Bees line for this mod, there are two different lines of bees. There's the ones that come from the Plutonium B being converted and like pollinated. And then there's the other one being converted by given a block. And so right. depending on the way you process the Plutonium B, you get a different tree essentially from there on. They need each other to be able to keep going up the tree to have the ludicrite bee pollinate those eggs to turn it into the ridiculite bee. And then the ridiculite bee pollinates the next tier of eggs, the ludicrite. We're all so confused. This it's is so mess. much. Oh, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. I don't know what's going on. It's a disaster. Okay. Everything's it's falling I apart. <gasps> You're gonna need to just trust me on this one. I've got it all mapped out in this noggin of mine. Don't you worry. I'm cooking. Okay, so now that we have magentite coming into our system because of our bees, now we can actually export this right to the fluidizer to convert into the fluid magentite, which will then be sent right into the reprocessor to make the ridiculite. And now if we turn this on, we should be seeing that this converts right into the magentite fluid, which is going right into here. And now we can turn this machine on, and now we are producing ridiculite. So we're basically at the point where we have the ludicrate here, which is what we need to get the inanite. Now, the one thing we have to get now for the inanite is something called rosinite. If we take a look at the rosinite reactant, we can see that we actually have to make something called verdirium. And verdirium fluid is actually made inside of the fluidizer, which we can actually use fluid mixing to make the verdirium. Now we can use the fluids themselves to do the fluid mixing, but I think the solid mixing will be easier. And all we have to do basically is mix uranium and plutonium to produce verdirium. Once we have that, we can basically make infinite amounts of verdirium 
which will then send into our reactor to then turn into the rosinite. We're going to have one exporting uranium ingots and one exporting the plutonium ingots. And now we should have both of these being able to be mixed and turn into verdirium, which we do. Nice. Okay, so once we have this now, we're going to want to send this directly into our reactor. And we're also going to have to get for the fluidizer, a fluidizer output port is what we actually want. So we're going to go ahead and just place that down right here. All this up with some cable and this should hopefully just work. Our fluidizer here is making all our verdium and that's being pumped right in here. And we're actually getting the rosinite straight out. Now, because we are actually not needing to be using this anymore with the water, I'm actually going to go ahead and reuse this reprocessor. So one of these is going to be making insanite and the other one is going to be making the inanite. And that's pretty much everything. Once we have enough of these resources, we can actually make the B for this. So I'm just going to use integrated dynamics to basically round robin and split evenly between these two. We're going to do a little bit of weird stuff here just to get this all hooked up right. And what we're going to do is set this here to extract, but we're also going to have this selected to round robin. So it'll split the outputs between all connections. So we're going to also want to do that over on this one as well. And here we go. That is our inanite being produced on this side. Now we have actually some insanite already being made. We come in here and take a look. We actually are out of beniotite, Be benetoit. Oh, it's so close. There we go. We Finally. have to get Never. more benetoit. I'm pretty sure we can find some of this benetoit or yeah, it's in the nether. So we should be able to get quite a bit of this. No problem. Oh, oh no. Guess who backed up the storage? Last thing to do is craft up the insanite block. So we'll let this run a little bit longer. And then basically all we need is just enough to get 18 of these insanite blocks. And then we're basically all ready to go. We can basically go ahead and craft up our first couple insanite blocks. There we go. We have six insanite blocks here, Grace, and more are coming in quite quickly now. So we're basically all done with extreme reactors. And looking at this now, we're basically done the philosopher's fuel item. The rest of this is already done. Rejuvenated flesh we already have. Day or unblock from Forbidden and Arcanus is actually a very easy craft. We have all this stuff already and I put it on auto craft. And the last thing we have to do is the rainbow furnace. Now the rainbow furnace is again, just a bunch of random materials and a lot of auto crafting, but it's very achievable for us right now. So what I'm going to do is get the auto craft recipe set up for rainbow furnace stuff. And once we have the last few insanite blocks, we can craft up all 18 of the philosopher's fuels. Now that we have all this on auto craft, crafting up 18 should be totally doable. Also the Deorum block, we need 18 of these. So let's see if we can do that as well. We're missing 15 phantom membranes. Leather inside of a nucleo protonic synthesizer. Okay, and we're making a phantom membrane. <laughs> nice, there we go. Get those all crafted up. Can we do this? There it is. One. Oh, we can get all of them. Look at that. Look at this, 18 philosopher's fuels are done, which also means that we have completed the master of elements but with all that being said i think that's what we're going to call it for this episode thank you very much for watching everybody i really hope you did enjoy if you did enjoy feel free to leave a like comment and subscribe to the channel also if you haven't already be sure to join the discord the link is in the description down below but that's it for me everybody i hope you all have a good one and we'll catch you in the next episode bye, bye.